Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the principles of exercise. These are actually principles I developed over the years looking at all the terrific studies on exercise and bone health. As you will remember, Gina this week spoke about these exercise principles and in her section, The Exercise Evolution, in our Exercise Evolution channel, she discussed some types of you can, exercises you can do that really apply these principles we're going to speak about today. I hope you're all enjoying Exercise Evolution, by the way. I think it's a great offering. So the first principle is that bones and muscles can be seen as forming one single unit, and that is frequently referred to as the bone-muscle unit. The important thing here is that you have chronically weak bones, they will be associated with chronically weak muscles, and just the opposite. If you have nice, strong muscles, it's very likely that they're going to be associated with strong bones. We think of the muscle-bone unit, they change together. The second principle is that bone adapts to the load put upon it. So in other words, if I lift very heavy weights or I work in a job that causes me to put a lot of load on my bones, I'm going to have stronger bones. And it's like nature said, I'm not going to waste energy and resources building strong bones if the person is not going to use these bones. So when we're very active, when we, when we walk a lot, stomp a lot, dance a lot, put a lot of load on the bone, or much less if we work in a physical job where we have to lift, move things about, we're going to have stronger bone. Bone adapts to the load put upon it. The third point is the, the load effect on bone is site-specific. So for example, if I play tennis a lot, my right arm is going to get very strong. My left arm is not going to get so strong. My muscles not going to get so strong, and my bones not going to get so strong. So if I want to build the hip, I really should do exercises that put impact on the hip. Hopping, jumping, skipping, walking. And when I walk, I might march a little, stomp a little. When I come down the stairs, I pay attention because that, that heavy impact going down, that builds bone. So the loading of bone is site-specific. If I want to strengthen my bone in my wrist, I do exercises to strengthen the wrist. Perfect. The third point is that no matter what kind of exercise you do, rest is required to build bone and to build muscle. So when you talk about very intense training, intense effort to build muscle or bone, what you do is you exhaust the muscle but you have to rest several days in order for that to recover. So there's a balance of rest and activity. And you can tell, like for example, I'm doing this little training now with a trainer, and if I go one day and I come back in three days and I still don't, and I'm not do, I can't lift as heavy weights as before, it's because I haven't had enough recovery time. So be sure to realize the principle of rest and activity. You must rest enough. We always say, the work gets done during the rest. It doesn't get done when you're lifting those weights when you're exercising because that actually breaks down tissue. It's in the rest that you build new tissue and fibers, both in bone and in muscle. The fifth point is that the impact of exercise on bone strengthens a direct dose response relationship. In other words, the more impact you put, the bigger the impact is on the growth of bone. For example, walking is one thing that gives a certain impact. Like when I stand, I've got one, one, uh, one factor of body weight. If I jump up, I can get two or three. If I jump off a, a six inch platform, seven inch, eight inch, I can, get, I can get maybe three times body weight. Come down with a thud on that. There's a dose response with the amount of load and the amount of bone build. The next point, is that bone adaptively responds to modeling is sensitive to changes in dynamic but not static loading. So I'm loading statically here, the body gets used to it, it's not going to do too great benefit. But if I vary it up, if I move about, if I jump, if I hop, if I have a dynamic loading, and particularly dynamic loading during different parts of the day, 
You see the bone, like everything else in the body, adapts to what we do. So if you're constantly giving, if I'm constantly walking at this pace, it's going to adapt to that. But if I shake it up and walk faster for a while, then walk slower, this idea of interval training, that makes a difference. The most interesting example I saw of this was a Chinese study looking at bone density in two types of individuals, paratroopers who jump out of airplanes and come to a big crash landing, and they get probably the calculation was like 16 times their body weight when they hit that ground. Now, that's a pretty big weight that could actually break a lot of bones if you didn't have strong bones. And they compared these paratroopers to basketball players, which in China they call hoopers. We had to look that one up, what the heck hoopers were. And these hoopers, basketball players actually had a stronger bone density and more increases with that. They had more increases with the activity than the paratroopers. And that's because it was variable. In other words, they didn't have one big thud. They have several different thuds all during their, their practice and their game period. Some of the thuds were big, some were low, some of the loads were high, some were less high. So the variation in the load is really helpful. Um, again, we've got this direct dose-response relationship that I mentioned before. That's very important. And the final thing is that I've noticed over the years that the worse off you are, like the lower your bone density is, the better gains you can get from exercise. Now this is very hopeful because you might say, well, I've got a low bone density, it's not going to do me any good. But get out and do exercise even if you start with walking, even if you start with a little harder walking, like walking uphill, downhill, even if you start with some squats, even if you have to go to a physical therapist and say, teach me safe exercises, you will benefit more than the person who has a very good bone density. You have more to gain. So just keep in mind that interesting thought that the worse off you are, the more you have to gain and the more quickly you will gain. That's a very important and a hopeful point. Finally, I would just say that our skeleton plays many, many important roles in our body. And we're going to be talking about these more because sometimes we think that that we can just do a few things and satisfy the needs of our bones. But once we understand the many roles the body, the bone play, everything from producing hormones to regulating how blood sugar is used to storing minerals to saving our life when we get our little pH out of balance, the more we understand the many roles that bone plays, the more we're going to realize we have to do every part of the Better Bones, Better Body program. And exercise is one of the great parts. So if you are interested in building bone health, get out there and do the exercise. Remember the exercise principles. And if you want to have fun on top of all this, join us at our next retreat, which is going to be in northern Pennsylvania. It's going to be in early May. Gina is going to be showing a lot of exercises. I'm going to be teaching the full Better Bones, Better Body program. And we're going to have a great time at all that, too. So we'll talk to you soon. Be well.